I've got live open. I want to create a Max for Live um, device. Okay, so I go into the browser section here. I choose the Max for Live category, and you notice there's three different options here: Max Audio Effects, Max Instrument, Max MIDI Effect. Okay, the differences here are ones of inputs versus outputs. Okay, a Max Audio Effect is going to have audio input and output. This is for building a an audio processing effect like a flanger, like a delay line, like things that are in that processing category, okay? A max instrument is gonna have a MIDI input and an audio output, which would be for building what? Like a virtual instrument or a synthesizer, something that's doing synthesis. It's reacting to MIDI input as the control and it's generating audio output, okay? A max MIDI effect has MIDI input and MIDI output, okay? So this is good for your things like building step sequencers, things that are going to react to MIDI coming in and um, it, well, potentially, it doesn't have to have a MIDI input, it could just use MIDI output. So something like a step sequencer that generates MIDI messages going out, that's what a max MIDI effect is for, okay? So I'm going to open up this subcategory and these are the default things that are already built in. Let's see, where's that mono? There's the mono sequencer that was in that demo video. Feel free to watch those demo videos and play around with it because that's a cool instrument. But we want to build a, a template max MIDI effect. We click and drag that down. Okay. And you see this is a really boring looking max patch now by default, right? You've got a MIDI in and it's connected to the MIDI out and nothing happens. Uh, to this, it just passes many messages through. We want to edit this in order to actually do something. That's where the edit button comes in, and that's where the error message that John described earlier comes into play. Oh, it disappeared already before I could even zoom in. Okay, hopefully you guys don't get vertigo watching this video. There we go. 64, expected 64, found 32. Okay, what could possibly be going on? Well, I'm glad you asked. Okay, first thing I need to do is quit max. And then I need to actually go find Max on the hard drive. Okay, in the Applications folder, go down to find Max. Make sure you pick, this is Max 7, don't pick Max 6. I think it's here for legacy purposes. Oh, I don't want to actually launch it. Shoot. Quit. Okay. So. What I want to do is I want it's it's a setting in the application. I have to actually take Max, and if I uh, Apple or Command I, I open up the info on the Max app, and you'll notice that right here there's this option that says Open in 32-bit mode. In order for it to work between Max and Live, they have to both be in 64 or both be in 32-bit mode. So what's happening right now is. Live is in 64-bit mode, but Max is in 32-bit mode, and you need to switch it. So just simply check, okay? And now, when I go back to my Live uh, Max MIDI effect, when I click the Edit button, it's going to launch Max. It's now running in 64-bit mode, and it's happy, okay? Make sense? Uh, let's see, so we covered that. I covered the differences between those different types of max MIDI effects, max audio effects. Uh, four minutes, what can I build in four minutes? What was that menu you just went through to uh, change that to max? It was, uh... It's not a menu. You have to go find the max application in your finder. Okay, yeah. And I command I when it's highlighted. There's an option in the max application info that says open in 32-bit mode. Okay. Uh, let's do this. If I open Max back up, I had a recent patch. What if I do something with this pluck patch right, and pull this into my Max for Live device? How about that? Okay. So this would be an instrument, right? This would be a MIDI instrument because it's going to take MIDI input and it's going to generate audio output, right? <clears throat> so I can, after building in Max, I can actually copy over here inside of Max. I can get rid of this MIDI effect and drag in a generic Max instrument 
And when I edit this, I can open up the window, I can paste. So I just basically paste it from my max patch into this max instrument, okay? Um, but you see the problem here is this device vertical limit, which is defined because of the fact that when we're in live, the, the, the channel strip is all confined to this space down at the bottom. So that's why your max for live devices need to stay within this device vertical limit. I can zoom in a little bit. I might be able to zoom out. I don't want to zoom in quite that much. There we go. Okay, this device vertical limit is something you need to stay within if you want to stay within that uh, that that uh, channel strip there. Okay, uh, and what you'll see is if I save the, this now, which I, it should. If I do a save as. Okay, yeah, I'm going to save it on the desktop. This is my 1208 demo. Awesome. And when I go back to Max for Live, I get this really crummy looking user interface. Yes? Okay. Uh, I actually have to close this. See, this is not the best user interface. Can we agree on that? Yes. Okay. So, go back to edit. Okay. And what we want is down here at the bottom, there's this thing called presentation mode. Okay. Objects are either in presentation mode or not in presentation mode, and by default they're all out of presentation mode, okay? You need to select things you want in presentation mode. So like this keyboard might be nice to see in presentation mode. So let me click on it. I go to the object menu, and there's an option here that says add to presentation, okay? It should give you a little pink halo effect around the object. Somebody see that in the back? Okay. That lets you know visually this is now part of my presentation. And so when I go to presentation mode, everything else fades away and the keyboard is there. Okay. I can now also reposition this. So if I want this up in the upper left hand corner during my presentation mode, I put it over there. Okay. And now when I when I go from presentation mode back to patching mode, it magically moves it back into place, okay? So not only can they be in or out, they can be in different positions, they can be at different scales. So if you want something to be smaller in your presentation mode or bigger in your patching mode, you can do that as well. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do, okay? So presentation mode is your friend for building user interfaces, okay? Uh, let me just real quick add, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my MIDI, oh no, these are raw MIDI messages. Wow, I'm going to fix this. I'm just going to take my output, plug it into my plug out so I actually get sound out of this thing. I don't have time to do the massaging of MIDI messages to make it actually respond, but I'm going to add a knob. You asked about knobs, right, John? So right up here in the menu bar, there's Max for Live Objects, okay? There's a button, there's a dial, there's a grid. Some of these we've been using. We've been using... We use live.step and where to go? Live. I can't find it now, but there is a live number box. Uh, I'm going to do a live dial, okay, and it drops it into the patch for me. I'm going to have a live dial actually control this randomness here. Uh, and the live dot, all the live user interface objects, I realize I'm in overtime, so I'm going to try to be quick here. Uh, have inspectors that help you define things for the live environment. So these parameters here, some key uh, items that you might want to change, like the range. I don't want my randomness to be all the way down to zero. I want it to start at like 100 and I want it to go to uh, 1200. That sounds like a good range, okay? Um, modulation mode is important with how you add automation to it. Uh, let's see, integers fine, what am I looking for? I'm looking for, oh, scroll down. I don't see anything that says units. Does anybody see units on here or no? Like un unit. Ah, unit style. Ah, here it is. Okay, so it's underneath int. Here's where you get... There's a hertz option, which automatically puts it in hertz. There's a decibel option, which automatically puts it in decibels. There's a percent option, a pan option, a sim so some, some handy units for building good musical interfaces, okay? 
this one happens to be in hertz, right? Because we're controlling the frequency of the randomness. So let's put it in hertz, okay? Uh, so now it actually says hertz. I want this to be in my presentation. I'm going to go to presentation mode. Uh, I obviously don't want it on top of the keyboard like that, so I'm going to put it down here. And I can add other user inter interface elements. The last bit of the puzzle here is I actually need to go to the patcher inspector window. Okay, So to get to this inspector window for the patcher, you need to make sure nothing is selected inside your patch. And then you control click. You get a floating menu that shows you the inspector window. And in here is an option to open in presentation. This, makes, this forces your Max for Live device to open in presentation mode by default rather than in patching mode, okay? So you get the user interface that you built instead of the, the behind the scenes guts, okay? Check that box, save this, and now look at my beautiful little demo. Okay, oh, I actually need to close it. And I should be able to now Look at that, my Max for Live patch is making noise. It's actually changing. Here it's brighter, darker, darker still, the darkest, okay? So that's a, oh, I just knocked the microphone. That's a quick demo of Max for Live. I did this as a quick time recording, we covered the, the 32 versus 64 bit mode, we built a max instrument. I talked about live user interface objects, and I also showed you presentation mode and how to load in presentation mode, okay? I'm going to end the recording here.